My Sorry, while we're talking about tax numbers, I should also go on to say your national insurance number is completely different from your tax number because we have different tax numbers in the UK for different purposes. If so, you have a company that will have a corporation tax number, you as an individual will have your personal uh, unique tax reference number, which applies to you as an individual. So if you're running a company, you'll pay tax twice, once for the company, and then if the company pays you a dividend or uh, income, uh, a salary, then you would have to pay tax on that as well. So those are two further tax numbers in addition to the national insurance number. Ah, huh, even I didn't know that. National insurance is your salary, right? Uh, na national insurance is what you provide to your employer. It's something which the tax system uses uh, to identify you. But you also have your unique tax reference number, which is what you put in your tax return. If and a company have will have one of those as well because it's a separate legal body. If you have the other income as such. Exactly. Okay, um, so go back to a question that we had. If I have 500,000, I want to buy, buy four properties. What is my next step? Okay, I, I'm going to, I'm thinking, I'm going to open a bank account first, because that's probably take a bit more time, and mm -hmm. put my 500,000 in the bank account, and then proceeding to make offer. Would you be, or yes. should I find a solicitor first? It always helps if you instruct a solicitor at the outset of a transaction because we can try, try to help stay past from the pitfalls. You might have a, a boy's face. Um, the way you, you source a property in the UK is normally through an estate agent. Right. Um, there are various, they still have their various websites. There are also quite a few property portals. Um, three of the most popular are on right the market. Uh, right Move, that's another one. Uh, okay. Your Move. Yeah is a further one and, and there are others. Yeah, other property portals are available and um, a lot of people will actually go onto the internet to find their property these days and find the estate agent to arrange a viewing as an afterthought. So you still have these little local firms of estate agents who will be based in uh, you know towns and villages up and down the country. They will be staffed by people who are experts in that particular area. Yeah. You will know um, how to price the various properties in that area for sale. What you need to remember so they're acting for the seller, not for you. And they don't owe any duty of care to, to anyone who comes through their door, um, except in order to comply with the estate agent's uh, legislation, which is perhaps more limited than it could be. Um, they're not allowed to make any uh, misrepresentation about the property. But apart from that, their job is to get the best price possible for the seller. So if it you happens are, a lot in Portugal, misrepresentation of the property. <laughs> it happens an awful lot, you'd be surprised. Um, I'm not casting aspersions on estate agents in any way, shape or form, particularly as I rely on many of them, uh, to uh, you know, um, or put them on any kind of blacklist, so I continue to get work. But of course, you just need to bear this in mind. Okay. Um, they're acting on the property. They are acting on the seller. So my next question is, the estate agent do not charge the buyer yes. a commission. So I, I know that. But <laughs> they, they pay, um, they're, they're paid by the seller. And they normally charge between 1% and 2% plus VAT, which is currently 20% this week. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and of course, the more they sell the property for, the higher their commission. Although at 1% to 2%, it obviously doesn't make that much difference. At the, lower end of the, market, at the higher end of the market to make quite a big difference. Okay. Um, my next question is um, due diligence um, yeah. of the document. So imagine I'm trying to make an offer on a property. Should I send a surveyor to the property first before I make an offer? Or should I make an offer and then survey the property? It's normally done the second way around. So you'd find a property you like. You hope it's okay. Um, you put in your offer based on the fact that it will be okay. Yeah. Then you send in a surveyor. Then if they find something wrong with the property, you can use your survey result to renegotiate the price. If it turns out there's something fundamentally wrong with the property and you're still happy to accept it with that floor, but at a lower price. That's a really good tip, actually. That's how you can get a discount. On it's what many people use their survey for. And the various sorts of surveys you can get, ranging from um, the bank's valuation uh, for a mortgage, if you are getting a mortgage. Um, but the thing to remember is that that is the bank's valuation and you cannot rely on it. 
So the bank's valuer may say the property is perfectly fine and worth such and such an amount. Um, but often they will not even have been inside the property. They may have done what they call a drive-by survey, they stick their head no, out of the car. They may even have done desktop survey where, where they look at Google Earth. So um, the best form of survey you can get is a full structural survey. Certainly if you're buying a freehold house, I would always recommend getting one. It is more expensive than the halfway step, which is a home buyer survey. Most often you will find that um, they are so heavily qualified that they don't really tell you that much, but you can find out yourself. Yeah. So I think um, personally, being uh, fairly cautious when it comes to purchasing property, I would always go for a full structural survey. Yeah, because you don't know if there's some rot in the basement or... A lot of properties in the UK are very old. Many were built in the Victorian period from 1840 onwards. Although they're still standing, um, many of the, uh, the floorboards may have deteriorated or the reef may have been in bad repair. The, uh, the electrics, for example, may need replacing. Did this to a Hong Kong person is extremely uh, scary to them to buy a property over 100 years old. So um, what about if you buy a new property? Do you still need a surveyor? Um, Often more so than when you're buying an existing property, because the thing about uh, Victorian properties is they, they have shown themselves to be capable of standing for 100 and 170 odd years. So, um, in the case of a new build, it's entirely unproven. And you will see uh, many of the larger, more well-known developers um, build well, purely for profit. So they're building with the, uh, the cheapest materials they can get away with. May look very nice for the first couple of years on the outside until um, you know you, you have a very damp winter and the outside walls start, start turning green, which I've seen happening on uh, one really? development. Yes, if you're buying a new property, it is essential to make sure that you um, receive the benefit of the uh, one of the home builders guarantee schemes. Um, these are normally for ten years. Ten years. And uh, ten years. And they will normally repair any defects in the first two years and structural defects for the remainder of that term. So um, the, the other thing you need to be aware of when you move in is that often, as I've seen in some of these videos of your Portuguese properties, um, some of the flats are, are finished before others. And um, you, you need to make sure that uh, the builders are on the hook to come back and finish off any minor defects, what we call snagging works, after completion. Because usually it's only once you move into a property and you've turned all the taps, you've lived there for a little while, you discover that perhaps it, everything isn't quite as it should be, one of the windows leaks, for example. And uh, that is when you can, um, under the terms of this guarantee scheme, get the builders back in to, uh, to carry out the repairs. And if they don't, then the insurers will carry out the works and recover that from the building. So is it obviously um, essential to buy insurance for your property? Yes, and when, I, when I'm talking about um, NHBC insurance, for example, the National House Builders uh, Council insurance. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is different from buildings insurance. So the buildings insurance will protect you from the risk of your house burning down. Um, the, uh, the NHBC insurance, or similar with Zurich and uh, various other providers, uh, they will essentially ensure that, uh, that, that the house has been built to the standards you believed when you purchased it, based on the information provided by the seller. But so if it turns out that that's protected for 10 years? Yes, from completion. Right. It seems quite uh, bomb-proof that way, and the investment is quite safe, no? Well, well, it is, but you have to bear in mind the amount of, if, if something does go wrong, you have to bear in mind the amount of time it's going to take you to write to everyone involved, get them in, get them engaged, get them to come around and fix it. Now, some are built better than others. Um, it, it's down to the, um, you know, the individual circumstances of the individual case, how long it will take to get it fixed. Yeah. It, it's obviously much better if you don't need to, uh, to draw in this insurance and you can ensure that, uh, the, um, that, that the house is properly built in the first place. But again, obviously we live in a capitalist society, same as in Hong Kong. People are out to make money and they're out to make the maximum profit. So you have to make sure that you as a first time buyer or the buyer of a, a new built property do not become a victim of that. And that is where it helps to have a um, specialist solicitor carry out 
detailed inquiries beforehand, make sure that the insurance is in place, um, and make sure that there are terms in the contract which will protect you. Uh, if you if you're buying this off plan, for example, that you can't be required to move into the property until it's uh, reached a, a certain satisfactory condition. Um, yeah, that was what, what I was going to ask about. A lot of um, client may buy off plan properties. Yes, um, it's very popular. Yes, and um, how do can, how can they protect themselves? That's what a lot of people is going to ask. And like you said, it's the insurance, right? Yes. Well, all the, all the rights of the purchaser arise out of the contract. So before exchange of contracts, that is where you need your solicitor to study the contract to make sure that it has all the terms which will protect you in there. Right, 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 right. Um, now, I was going to ask about the due, due, due diligence. Sorry, I can never pronounce that word. Due diligence before the offer. What will your, uh, as a solicitor, role involved like we already illustrated like about the insurance and and the um, kind of safety of the contract so what what is your work involved to check uh, how safe the purchase is let's take for example the case of somebody buying without a mortgage if you're a cash purchaser um, particularly if you if you like gambling you don't have to do any searches at all you can just take a punt and spend some money, it may be a good buy, it may not. It's, it's the individual's choice. The sensible thing to do is to carry out as many searches as possible, because once you exchange contracts, it is very, very expensive to get out of that contract. You pay a deposit of 10% of the purchase price at exchange. If you do not complete on a completion date, you don't lose the deposit automatically, but the seller may serve what is called a notice to complete on you, and that will then usually give you 10 working days in which to complete, or you forfeit the deposit. And if you um, have delayed completion, you may find that you're also on the hook for various things like storage costs, uh, removal expenses, temporary accommodation, etc. So it's, um, it's very important not to exchange contracts until such time as you're happy with the property. Now, in order to be happy, you need to have found out as much information as you can. Sources of information include um, the local authority search, which is what will give you most information about the property. I remember many years ago when I was a trainee, um, this is the only time this happened, uh, fortunately. I was studying a local authority search and um, I couldn't quite believe what, believe what I was reading. It turned out that the front garden of this property was about to be demolished um, and compulsorily purchased by the local authority so that they could widen the road in front of it. Oh my God! So instead of having, you know, a, a front garden with a quiet road, these people would have opened their door onto what was pretty much a dual carriageway. So this is the importance of local authority search. It shows you what, what, what the plans are for the land around the property and going through the property. And they're allowed to sell something like that? Um, yes, because the principle under English law um, comes from Latin, caveat emptor, buyer beware. And if you, uh, if you run headlong into a purchase, um, you can regret it later. But surely, like, they will know the buyer's going to find out from the searches? Well, not all solicitors have always been as diligent as they should have been. Oh, the my God. Diplomatic way of putting that. Um, so yes, it's obviously very important to make sure that, um, that that doesn't apply to the property you're, you're considering purchasing. And there are various other sources of information, such as uh, an environmental search. We always recommend you um, get one of those done because uh, many new build housing developments in particular have been built on floodplains over the last 20 years. And if your house is flooded, <laughs> oh. it, it can become impossible to insure. And if you can't insure the property, you're going to find it very difficult to sell. So again, that means a, a, a vast chunk of your hard-earned cash has um, floated down a river, might be an appropriate analogy. So um, th these are the, the type of pitfalls which we try to save you from by asking um, long lists of uh, inquiries, unless of course the seller has provided a lot of information up front, which is more common these days. But we still have to check the information which has been given, make sure it hangs together in a consistent way and uh, make any supplemental inquiries if we think they haven't given the full information. So this is why conveyancing can be so time consuming in the United Kingdom. Three months is not an uncommon period in between an offer being accepted 
and completion taking place and you moving into that property. Um, it, it's simply because the, um, the, the, apart from the various other reasons we've explained about why chains break down, which is, uh, you know, people's circumstances change, etc. It may be that um, it's taking one of the parties in that chain a very long time to get the information to their solicitor and for them to pass it on. And it's only once all the purchasers in, in the chain are happy that they will all exchange contracts on the same day and set the same completion date at that point. And um, at that point, uh, you will know which, uh, which date you're aiming to move into the property on. Unless something goes wrong in the chain in between exchange and completion, which can happen as well, in which case you have to work out who is what by way of forfeited deposit and so on. Um, um, I find it quite interesting about like you can find out if it's obviously on a flood plain and uh, things like that. Uh, but and the fact that probably the seller won't actually um, say that, I, I find it quite um, bizarre because surely, um, yeah, it's surely. The, um, the, the, these days, most properties, um, where, when you purchase them, the solicitor will send to the seller, uh, the solicitor acting for the seller will send them a property information form to fill out. Uh, that will ask all the inquiries, which in the old days a, a buyer solicitor would have asked. It, it aims to uh, short circuit the process, or take a shortcut to the process. Now, there's a, a big warning notice on the first page of that form, which says that the information you provide on this form um, will be relied on by the buyer and form the basis of the contract. So if the seller um, answers a question on there saying, uh, no, the property has never been affected by flooding, and you subsequently find out that it has been affected by flooding, then you would have a claim for misrepresentation against the seller uh, so for the, you know, the loss in value. Finding a right solicitor is really important to change documents. Absolutely. <gasps> yes, yeah, so we haven't even come on to apartments and leasehold properties because there it's very important that the solicitor should read the lease and explain it to you. Is in my question actually about this. So imagine I if I already paid 10, so this is before I pay 10% that we have done the due diligence. That's right. Yeah. So if I can still cancel and not lose out if we find out some major problem with the property. Yes, you will have to pay for the cost of the searches, um, which are generally in the region of 350 pounds, depending on the local authority. Um, different local authorities have different fees. Um, you can also carry out various uh, supplemental searches if you wish to. There's something called a planned search, which we um, always recommend. And this will tell you um, what your neighbours are planning on doing to their properties. So the local authority search uh, will tell you whether your property, or the one you hope to be your property, the one you're looking at buying, will have the benefit of planning consent for extensions, uh, you know, loft extensions, uh, rear extensions, etc. It won't tell you whether the neighbouring properties have those consents, which is why you can carry out a plan search, which will tell you the status of the planning applications of a local area. So you can discover whether or not you're about to move into a building site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or next to a um, fun fair. <laughs> or, or, uh, or Yes, or something that's about to receive um, planning consent from a change of use from, uh, you know, uh, a restaurant to a betting shop or a yeah. chip shop or something. Yes. That, that's really important to know.